Hi and welcome to my guide of the quest regicide. The quest requirement is underground pass and the skill requirement is 56 agility. Also you will need to be able to kill a combat 110 guard which can be safe spotted. Items needed are two bows of any kind with between 4 and 10 arrows, which both of them you don't mind dropping unless you're going to kill the combat 110 with a bow. Then you will also need two ropes, a spade, pestle and mortar, a tinderbox, one regular limestone, not a brick, a strip of cloth or four balls of wool with 10 crafting. The strip of cloth is not available in the Grand Exchange since it is only used in this quest. Either you get 10 crafting and 4 balls of wool to make one for yourself during the quest, just like me, or let a friend make one for you and trade it over. You will also need to have any kind of gloves that are not magic related, like magic, lunar or graceful. Between 7 and 15 pieces of coal and one cooked rabbit. If you are not able to get a cooked rabbit by trading, you will need to bring along a axe. Then I am also going to bring along some weight reducing armor. I am going to bring all of them which I currently own, as well as between 5 and 6 stamina potions. Since the only thing we will have to defend ourselves against is the Comet 110 guard, I am also not going to bring along my armor and just going to use my trusty whip with protect for melee to kill the guard. If you don't have protect for melee I suggest to use magic against the guard since it has a pretty de decent defense against melee and ranged while it has negative magic defense. Then for the teleports I'm going to bring along 1 to Felador and 2 to Ardoin. And then lastly would be a decent amount of good food for the boss fight, but mainly for all the traps in Isavdar as well as in the underground pass. But because some traps in Isavdar are poisonous, you might also want to have a couple of antidote potions. I'm going to take like, let's say two. Okay, so after receiving a message from a messenger, approximately like half an hour after you've completed the underground pass quest, let's get the stuff to start the quest. First I'm going to deposit everything and I only have my whip and my graceful as my armor. The items needed to start the quest is one bow and let's take five arrows, both of them you don't mind dropping unless you are a ranger. You will need one piece of rope, you will also need a spade, a pestle and mortar, so your weight reducing armor. I'm also going to take like 3 stamina potions, 1 antidote potion, I'm also going to bring along my king's message, be sure that you have at least 2 empty inventory slots and then you can also just bring some food, because at the start of the quest we will also have to fight the combat 110 guard. And then also you will need to have a teleportation method to Falador, I'm just going to bring along all the 5 runes to get there. When you think you're ready, let's go to the East Ardoin Castle and talk to King Lathis to officially start the Regicide quest. Also, one last thing that you might need, if you followed my Underground Pass guide, I have told you to make a notepad, how to cross the grid, how to cross the grid in the uh, Underground Pass quest, which takes a lot of damage. And I've told you to save that file, so hopefully either you have saved that notepad or that piece of paper where you've written down your own grid path, or hopefully you can still recall it. I have just opened up my own grid and I know my path, how, how I can cross that grid without failing. So let's start the quest by talking to King Lathis. Okay, after talking to him, let's climb downstairs. And let's go back to the underground pass entrance. If you don't have your notepad or your piece of paper for your underground pass grid obstacle and you also can't recall it, bring a lot of food because it will be another trial and error to get past that obstacle. 
be sure to have at least two inventory slots when you're going to the underground pass. Alright, when we've arrived to the entrance of the underground pass, let's enter the cave entrance to enter the underground pass. And once again, let's uh, pass the swamp, the first obstacle, by going north and just go around it by climbing over three different rock slides. Here we'll find Kaftik again. Let's talk to him to get some damp cloth. If you have a low ranged level, drop the damp cloth, talk to him again to give so you'll get another one. Let's use the damp cloth on our arrows to make a couple of fire arrows. Use these on the everlasting fire, both of them, to light both of them. Let's go north between the, between the small path. Let's Stay one square away from the fence, turn our camera west, equip our bow and fire arrows and let's shoot the guide line or the guide rope. If you fail, just try again by getting another fire arrow and shoot again or else your character will automatically just run to the other side. Okay, here on the other side, let's equip our usual weapon and let's drop the bow, if you're not an archer, as well as the arrows to save up some inventory space. Turn the camera back north, then let's enter the alcove north, and there we'll find a plank spawn. Let's take this plank and go south. Now we'll just have to go through the entire underground pass, so we will end up at the chaos roots and Iben's temple once again. So just like in the underground pass quests, let's use our rope above our heads on the rock so we can swing across the northern gap and then follow the dungeon. The next obstacle should be the grid. Hopefully you can recall how you can cross the grid, else it will be another trial and error. Or just like what I said in the underground pass quests, that you have written it down, so we can use it right now. So I'm going to take out my text file and I'm just going to follow all the O's that I've written down, which is the path how I can safely cross this grid. Once you've crossed the grid, let's pull the lever on south of the gate. So we are able to go through, turn off our run energy, turn it back on, then go back west, continue running west, and but not too far because here are some odd markings on the northern wall. There are five of them, the first two are on the northern wall. Depending on your thieving level, you will succeed on disarming the odd markings. If you fail, you will get hit and just try again. And then the final three are on the southern wall. If you have a very low thieving level, let's say beneath level 30, just, just quickly run through this little hallway and get damaged by all of the odd marking traps. This will be a lot more efficient and you will also take less damage. Okay, let's go through, let's go to the next part and climb down the well. If you've taken some damage, let's uh, Activate Rapid Heal maybe, if you have the prayer requirement, and let's continue through this dungeon. The next part should be with the prisons. We will need to enter the southeastern prison. Let's pick lock that gate with the slave in it. Go to the southern wall, use the spade on the mud. 
so we are able to go crawl through the tunnel let's follow the path and then cross the ledge the next part will be with the stone bridges if you don't have 50 thieving you will have to cross these stone bridges if you have 50 thieving or higher just go south and you'll find a gate sign on your minimap let's go open pick lock this cage use your minimap to go east your character will automatically avoid all the swamp bubbles pick lock the other cage and let's continue through this dungeon the next part was with the unicorn after we have squeezed through the obstacle pipe okay let's go north we don't need to do anything in this room just crawl just pass through the tunnel and let's follow this path until we reach the paladins and west of the paladins we should find the final obstacle of this part of the dungeon which is a flat stone trap i already see it on my minimap just pass all these zombies just go to the trap you might already just use your plank and be ready to use it on one of those two flat stones or flat rocks so we are able to get across Let's continue going running west till we are at the well where you've used our where, where you can recharge your Iban staff. Just open a door next to it, and here we will be at the most annoying place in the entire game. Let's go south. Just keep going south until you see a path or a bridge where we can cross. Going west to cross the abyss okay just found mine let's cross this bridge hopefully we will not fail any of these if you would fail you would have fallen into the abyss and you will be now at the solace you will have to go either south of that area or northwest so you can climb up back to this second floor and then you will have to just try again next let's if you've succeeded let's follow this path then take the southern path i'm going to rotate my camera south and i'm going to cross this bridge yes succeeded let's continue going south just keep going south here we'll find another gap in the bridge let's cross this gap hopefully cross our fingers fuck okay okay made it across let's go a little bit south and then cross the final bridge and if you succeeded you've made it to the Ibans temple congratulations it is one out of two trips to pass the underground pass next let's open the door to enter Ibans temple and here you'll find a couple of NPCs let's talk to Kovtik and he will give you two loaves of bread as well as a stew next let's climb down the well and if you've turned on your rapid hill you can now turn it off and north of the well you will find a altar let's pray at it and continue going west just keep going west until you see a cave exit exit the cave and we should see a short cutscene let's take a step forward Okay, where are the elves? Okay, here they are. I, I just wandered around and here is the first art. Here's the first elf. Here are some other elves. Just continue through the conversation and they will tell you to go to Lord Iorworth. 
Alright, now we've made it to the elven forest of Isavdar. In here, there are four different obstacles. The first one is dense forest, which requires 56 agility to go through. The second one is a leaf-covered pitfall, which if you fall into, you will take 15 damage. The third one are some tripwires. There is a wire between two small rocks, and if you walk across it, you will take 10 damage and get poisoned, starting with 2 damage. The last one is a stick trap. Every time you fail, you will get hit in the face and take 8 damage. First, let's go west, until you can go any further west. Just keep going west, and here we'll find a quest sign. Just turn your camera south, and you should see some leaves on the ground. Click on the jump option closest to your character. Okay, once you've succeeded, let's go southwest. And now we just need to keep going southwest until we see a light blue area. Let's go west from this light blue area. Let's turn our camera a little bit west and between the trees, west of the blue area, we should find some sticks. Pass these sticks. If you get hit in the face, you will take 8 damage. Try again and again until you finally crossed it. Next we will need to go a little bit west until you are at the rocks and now we just need to follow the path north, northeast until we see another leaf trap. Jump the leaves once again use the option closest to your character and just keep going north. We will see another light blue area just keep going north, pass some grizzly bears, and here we'll find a log balance. Cross this log balance to have access to the elf camp. Let's go a little bit north, and here we should find Lord Iowarth, between all these comet 108 elf warriors. I have found them between the three buildings, he talked to the Lord. After having a short conversation with him, Let's enter the tent north of him, where there is a pot spawn. Take this empty pot and go back south. Now we'll have to exit the camp, so we'll have to cross the log balance once again. So let's go ahead back south and we'll have to cross the leaf trap once again, or the pitfall trap. So let's turn our camera south and look for that leaf trap. Jump the leaves, click on the jump option closest to your character. If you fail, try to find the protruding rocks and climb them. Jump the leaves. And let's continue running south. Just keep going south until we see another blue area. We'll go a little bit east, just keep going south. Pass some rabbits, just keep going south. And here we'll find another blue area. East of that uh, blue area, here you will find an NPC. Talk to the elf tracker. You have no proof that you are allied with Lord Ironworth. Let's go back north and talk to him about it. Just keep going north, northwest, and the only trap we will have to face would be the leaf trap again. So just keep going northwest until you see that leaf trap. Don't be too fast or and jump the leaves. Let's go back north. Enter the elf camp. Let's talk to Lord Iowarth and he should give you a pendant. Once you have this pendant, let's return to the elf tracker and he will trust us and also he will let us know how to go through the dense forest.
Okay, when we return to the elf tracker, let's talk to him. We will show him the pendant. He will trust you. Just skip through the dialogue and go west. West, near, near the forest, we should find some footprints. Right click on them and follow. Next, we should find some dense forest. First, let's return to the elf tracker to let him know what we have found. Okay, let's now return to the footprints and here we will have to pass the first dense forest. Also, then pass through the second one, but don't pass the third one just yet. When you pass the third dense forest, a level 110 Tyrus Guard will start attacking you. If you would lure him a little bit more west, there, there you will find some mushrooms. You could use those mushrooms as a safe spot if you're going to use ranged or magic to kill him. Also, you don't need the crystal pendant anymore, you can simply drop it. I'm going to climb over the third dense forest. Let's go a little bit west and attack the Tyrus Guard. Okay, when the Tyrus Guard is dead, let's go a little bit north and you'll find some rocks on your minimap. Go towards them and here you'll find two wire traps. Between those two smaller rocks, we should find some trip wire. These ones will have a trip over option. Try to find it and attempt to step over the trip wire. If you fail, you will get shot by four arrows, you will take two times five damage and you will also be poisoned. Let's drink some antidote, maybe heal up, and then go through the dense forest north. Once again. And then the third one, here we'll find some more grizzly bears. Then go west. Here we'll find another blue area. Just keep going west. And here we'll find an NPC south. R go towards that NPC, and here we'll find another Tyrus guard. Since you've defeated the first one, none of them will be aggressive. Let's enter the dense forest. Pass through the dense forests three times. And now you will be at the Tyrus camp. Let's go south. And around the center camp or tent, we should find a general. Okay, he was a little bit north. General Heining, let's talk to him. Next, we will need to take two barrels. Around the center tent, there will be three spawns, and these are all barrels. Let's take three. Let's take two barrels, and let's go back north. Go through the dense forest again. Now we actually have to return to the elf tracker. Here are the Tyrus guard. Go east, back to the grizzly bears. Turn our camera south and let's try to find that other dense forest. Alright, here near the, near the grizzly bears. Let's go through this forest. And here we are back at the tripwire. Try to find it and step over. 
if you fail, heal up, drink another anti-poison, turn our camera back north, and now we will have to go straight east. Just go east and he will find some dense forest. Okay, here we'll find footprints again. Let's go east. And let's return to the elf tracker. Talk to him. Next, let's go south. Keep going south and you'll find a tar swampy place. And you'll also find some sulfur. Take one sulfur. Just two squares west of the sulfur, you will you will be able to stand next to the swamp. Let's use the barrel on the tar to get a barrel of cold tar. Fill both of them up. Next, use your pestle and mortar on the sulfur to grind it into ground sulfur. Next, let's go north-northwest and return to Lord Isleworth. So we will give him the location of the Tyrus camp. Just keep going northwest, and once again, the only trap. Before we're able to enter the elf camp will be the leaf covered pitfall. Okay, here it is. Let's jump the leaves. And you've made it pretty much back. Back in our beloved elf camp, let's talk to Lord Iowarth. He should give you a book of big banks. Let's read it, close it and teleport to Felador. Let's go west to the western small bank. And in this bank we can grab some more stuff. In the bank, let's take our limestone. Be sure to have your empty pot. You also need to have your pestle and marker, your non-magical gloves. And let's go to the furnace of Feldor. Here in the building with the furnace, let's use the limestone on it. Fuck, my gloves. Equip your gloves before you are using it on the furnace. If you don't, you will get 8 damage. Okay, that was actually the use of the non-magical gloves. As you can see, graceful are magical because you can store them in the magic wardrobe in your house. And I also took 8 damage because I worn them. Next, let's go to the eastern bank of Felador, the big one. Since we don't need to fight anything during the quest anymore, I'm also going to deposit my weapon, so I can reduce my weight. I don't need my gloves anymore. What I do need is 4 balls of wool, or my strip of cloth. I'm going to deposit my plank, my spade, my pestle and marker, my antidote and my food. Then I'm going to take a teleportation method to Ardoin. And besides from all this, I'm going to take the rest of the inventory with Cole. Be sure to have your book of big banks. And let's go south. We will now need to go to the farm of Faldor. Just located southeast of Faldor, outside of the walls. In the Faldor farm there will be a loom. We will need to use that loom so we can make a strip of cloth. Okay, here at the Falador farm, I'm going to hop over the stile to go enter the cow field. Immediately go south. And here is the farm shop. Let's go more south, enter the southeastern room and here you'll find a loom. Let's weave and select the third option, the cloth. This should require four balls of wool and you'll get a strip of cloth. 
All right, let's now exit the farm south and we will now need to head to Remington. Okay, I can see the house portal in Remington. From here, I just need to go west, southwest, and here you'll find the building with the chemist in it from the biohazard quest. Let's enter this building and talk to the chemist. Let's talk about your quest. And he will read the book of big banks. Let's select the first option, what and how do I make NAFTA? And then just end the conversation by going north, exit the building. And just west of the building, there will find a, a fractionalizing still. Let's use a barrel of coal tar on it. And you will get this interface. On this interface, you will find two valves and two indicators, which indicate the pressure and the heat, as well as a furnace door, which has add coal written on it. We will need to click on the right side of the tar regulator valve twice and you'll see that the pressure and the pressure indicator will go up. Once it is in the green, let's click on the right side of the pressure once and now the pressure will be all good and it will remain that way. Next we will need to start adding coal slowly and this will increase the heat. Just slowly, very slowly, add heat until the heat indicator will go on green. Stop when it is in the green zone and then wait until the heat lowers a little bit. Then just add one more coal to add a little bit more heat to get it back into the green zone. Do this until the coal tar has been completely distilled. If either the pressure or the heat will enter the orange area, your barrel of coal tar will be destroyed and you will have to do it again. To, to have filled my entire green bar. This will indicate that my barrel of coal tar has now been fractionalized into a barrel of naphtha. Just exit this interface. You will now have a barrel of naphtha in your inventory. Now if the pressure or the heat was too high and you failed to make the barrel of naphtha, you will have a second barrel of coal tar so you can try again. Now because we already have our barrel of naphtha, we can simply drop this barrel of coal tar since we have gotten it from the first try. Next, teleport to Ardoin and let's go to the bank south of Ardoin. This is the one closest, I think. Okay. Here in the bank, let's grab our pestle and mortar, as well as our quick lime and an empty pot. Let's crush the quick lime with our pestle and mortar, so we'll have a pot of quick lime. Let's use this on the barrel of naphtha. Then use ground sulfur on it, and then a strip of cloth, and we'll get a fused barrel bomb. If you right click on it and examine, you will get a fused barrel full with fire oil. All right, now we'll have to go back to the elven lands and we'll have to go through the underground pass once again for the final time. So once again, we will need to have a bow with a couple of arrows to shoot fire arrows. I'm going to take both of them, which I am able to drop. We will also need to have a rope. We will need to have a spade. Be sure to have your barrel bomb you don't need to have your pestle and mortar or your coal anymore. You have made your barrel bombs. You also don't need your big book of banks, so just simply drop it. Then I'm also going to take a antidote potion. One are doing teleport to complete our quest. Then also a cooked rabbit. If you're unable to trade for this, you will just need to bring along an axe. And then the final item that we need is a tinderbox. 
besides on that I'm just going to take my most weight reducing armor I'm going to take like four stamina potions and besides from that I'm just going to take some food to pass all these traps in Isavdar as well as the underground pass let's have at least one empty inventory space and let's go back to the underground pass Okay, back inside the underground pass. Let's go back to Kovtik by crossing the swamp. Not crossing the swamp, just go around it. Then we just need to fire some fire arrows once again so we can cross to the other side and actually enter the deeper part of the underground pass. Give me some damn cloth. Drop, give me some more. Okay. Light my arrows. Go north, turn the camera west. Stay one square behind the fence. Let's take one square between it. Fire at it. And my arrow has impaled the rope from the first attempt. I'm getting good at this. Once again, just drop your bow if you don't want them anymore, same as for your arrows and fire arrows. Let's go back north in this alcove and take the plank from the plank spawn. And once again, let's go through the underground pass. This will very most likely be the final time to go, to go through the underground pass. Since after we have completed this quest we will have unlocked the elf camp teleports. We, were a we are able to charge the boat to Tyrus camp. We are able to use Zolandra teleport scrolls as well as the Arander pass shortcut. So there are four different reasons not to go through the underground pass anymore. So enjoy your final moments in this dungeon.
seriously despise this dungeon because the fail rate is so high on on this part of the quest crossing these bridges across the abyss the fail rate is way too high that makes this quest so annoying well not really the fail part just you will have to run all the way back that is the most annoying part the failing isn't really that bad god fucking damn it final one come on yes you can do it oh it's about time okay i only fell twice it was relatively good i think let's talk to kuftik please have some more food damn okay let's climb down the well turn off rapid heal pray at his altar and let's go back to Isavdar. Goodbye, underground boss. You will not be missed at all. Okay, here outside. Let's go west. Until we can't go any further west. And south of us we will find a leaf trap. Okay, keep going west. South of the quest sign. Turn the camera south. Click on the jump leaves option closest to your character. Turn your camera back north. Let's go a bit south. Not too far past the first big tree. And south of it you will find a dense forest between two big trees. Crawl through this dense forest going east. Turn our camera back south and let's go a little bit south. And here we should find another leaf covered trap. Let's jump these leaves. Motherfucker. Where the fuck am I? Dude! How the hell? Can you climb them from here? Of course you can't. Great. Thank you. Love you Jagex. Okay, here we are again. Took a little break. Still can't reach. Here we go. Okay, after crossing the leaves, let's keep running southwest. Just keep going southwest. Here we'll find the elf tracker. Just go west from him. Let's go back to the footprints, to the other dense forest, the first one where we went through. Let's go through this one. We will just have to go back to Tyrus camp. Oh, by the way, before I forget, if you do not have your cooked rabbit at the moment and you've brought your axe, just north of these dense forests and northwest of the elf tracker, there are a couple of rabbits. Just kill one of them to get a raw rabbit. Then chop down one of these trees, light it with your tinderbox, cook your raw rabbit until you have a cooked one. Then go through the dense forest and go west. Go a little bit north to these trip wires and try to step over them. Okay, for the first time I've succeeded. Let's go through the dense forest north. At the grizzly bears we just need to go west to the Tyrus guard. And north of that Tyrus guard we will find a catapult. Near the catapult we should find another NPC. Let's run towards that NPC and then right click and use the cooked rabbit on the Tyrus guard, unarmed. Okay, now he will be distracted. Use your barrel bomb on the catapult. Okay, now we just need to head back to Lord Isleworth in uh, Elf Camp, north of Isavdar. So let's go back east, return to the Grizzly Bears. 
go back through the dense forest just south of those bears. Now we need to try to step over this, these strip wires one last time for this quest. Okay, let's go east. Continue going east. Go through the dense forest once again. Then go north. Just keep going north and northwest until we see a leaf covered until we see a leaf covered uh, pitfall. Be sure to watch out for that one. This is the only obstacle between us and the elf camp. Okay, here it is. Let's jump these leaves. Continue running north and return to Lord Ironworth. Okay, let's talk to him. The deed is done and he will give you a message. Let's teleport to Ardoin and return to King Lathus' castle to complete our quest. In front of the castle, here you'll find... Oh. When you try to enter the castle grounds, an elf will talk to you. Just continue through the conversation and she will remove the magic seal so you are able to read the message. Close it. Just continue through the conversation. Even though King Lathus is apparently the bad guy, the deed has already been done, so... Let's go to King Lathus and claim our reward because the quest is done. What is done is done. So let's talk to the king. Congratulations, you've completed a regicide quest. You are awarded with 3 quest points, 15,000 GP, 13,750 agility experience and a quick route to Isavdar via the Arandar Pass. Also, you now have the ability to wield Dragon Halberds. This will require 60 attack and I think 30 strength. It's not really written in the strength guide at the moment. And these Dragon Halberds can be bought in the Halberd shop in Tyrus's camp. Also, you now have the ability to charter a boat to Tyrus camp. An ability to use the Elf camp teleport scrolls as well as the Zolandra teleport scrolls. This was my guide how to complete a regicide quest. Hopefully it helped and it was not too frustrating. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye.